Why is the game Red Dead Redemption so good? First off, I'll tell you what doesn't make this game good. The online. Oh, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the yes, okay. There are some good aspects, like the feeling of making your own cowboy some Wild West bounty hunter. Almost like the feeling of role-playing. But it never quite hits or keeps you going. The reason why this game is so good is because of the story mode. Okay, not just the story mode, but what's in the story mode? The characters, the feeling, the gameplay, the story, the countless options in the game. To make this easier for you, and probably for me as well, I'm making a chart with five parts that make this game good. Gameplay, feeling, characters, open world, and the overall beauty of the game. First off, let's start with gameplay. The game did such a great job at making you feel like you are actually riding your horse or actually walking through Valentine instead of some stiff and plain game. The small town of Valentine just seems like a live and busy place with people actually doing productive things. Compared to another one of Rockstar's games, GTA 5. Yes, it appears NPCs are doing things, but it never seems like they are actually doing productive work to benefit themselves. What I mean is, you can tell that they are programmed to just walk around waiting to get hit during a five-star chase, and compare that to the folks of Valentine walking around with hay bells and saddles actually doing something to help the town. You can literally walk around the town and follow one person, and they will likely actually be doing something instead of just walking around. A second part of gameplay I like are the amount of stranger missions you can run into. The game put in hours of work to make random NPCs seem like they serve a purpose to this town. For example, the soldier from the Civil War is one of the NPCs that has a little more than just regular dialogue. Partner? Hey, brother! Oh, that's too bad, buddy. They told me I was dying, only I never did. You ever die, friend? Well, no. Of course not. Of course you didn't. But, well, we're all gonna die. And with this soldier, you can have multiple interactions with him at different times throughout the story. This is just one example of the many strangers in Red Dead that make the game feel alive. Moving on to the second point, feelings. The feelings you get when playing this game are key to what actually makes me and many others keep playing this game. For example, you can feel sad when Arthur is dying and feel excited when going to rob a bank. Don't get me wrong about these feelings, but I think we can connect gameplay with feelings and experience a game that has so much to offer. The feelings I mentioned, like sad when Arthur died, are from missions but when playing by yourself, and you are riding through Valentine, you feel this sense of healthiness and happiness as you stroll through this town. See, this game will also make you switch feelings. If I shot up the town of Valentine, I would actually feel bad because it is obviously a terrible crime, but also the honor system affects me. Remember the five points I talked about? Well, count this as a sixth point, the honor system. The honor system connects with the feelings of the game to make you do the right thing. This honor system can have effects on gameplay and how the story for the player turns out. Another way this game connects feelings with the user is the way they design the world of Red Dead Redemption. When riding through territory of the Skinner brothers near Blackwater or the Murphy brothers near Innsburg, you feel extremely scared and the game even puts stranger missions to make things even more scarier. For example, look at this. Cut your hair, boy! <laughs> oh, you got lucky there. But next time you come around these parts, you lose your top and more than that besides. Next time I won't let myself get bushwhacked. Mock me, boy. You weren't so brave a minute ago. Ha, ha, ha. Boo! Whoa, easy. Just looking at this gives me the chills, but it also shows how this game can give the player strong feelings. Next is characters. This might be my favorite one because the game makes the characters almost like a movie or TV show. You see some develop and undeveloped, 
some mean and turn nice, or vice versa. Either way you see character changes. Character changes are key to a game like this just like it is for a show. In fact, I think they did better at this than most shows. I'm going to talk about four characters and their connection with each other and their connection with us. First off, Arthur. Arthur starts out as this somewhat outlaw who is young and free and is in a gang which had technically adopted him. We don't see anything bad or good with this character, but we learn his relationship with the gang. We know that he is a good man, good man Mr. Morgan. but then we see something big happen. He has TB or tuberculosis. This affects him and the gang, but then he chooses to be smart and, knowing he will die, he teams up with John. That brings us to our second character, John Marston. We know a lot about John from the first game. We know he is married and has a kid named Jack. John is an outlaw who slowly turns into an average person. You can tell John is one of the smartest people in the gang, but he's also daring. This makes him a fun character. I won't spend much time talking about John because he's in few missions and has only known the end of the game. What's key to remember is Arthur saved his life, and they have this almost brother-like bond with each other. The second person is Micah. Micah is the worst character in the game by far, which makes him good in a way. The game designed him to be bad and ugly and gross, and they did a great job at that. Everyone hates Micah mainly because he ratted on Arthur. That's it for Micah. But who are we living out? I'll give you a hint. We just need money. Even that sound of Dutch gives me horrible feelings. Anyway, Dutch is a character you like at the start and hate at the end. Dutch seems like a good leader at first, but then he betrays everyone basically. Dutch is very annoying with his sucky attitude and always wanting well money. They did a great job at making him bad in this game. He's like Abel at the start and ruins everyone's life at the end, but this is what tops off the game. These last two, I'm going to connect with each other. Open world and beauty. The open world of this game seems endless, not literally, but I mean the possible that could happen. To this day, people are finding out secrets that exist in this game. Anything could happen like a bear attack, or shot by other O'Driscolls. But also the beauty this game offers like the mountains and the scenery can make the open world seem close to real life. Overall, this game could be considered the greatest game of all time. Let me restate that, the greatest story mode game of all time. Thanks for watching it. Please hit that sub button. It really helps.